Hey everyone, it's Amy Lynn Durham and you're listening to Create Magic at Work. Create Magic at Work is on a mission to equip senior leaders with tools they need to be a true quantum leader and actually understand what that means. Improve employee engagement, retain top talent, and transform your workplace culture to have less drama and stress. So let's start making magic. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Create Magic at Work. Today, I have someone super exciting that I want to introduce you to. Her name is Kristen Joy Ekins. She's an award-winning cultural strategist, solutions architect, master facilitator, high-performance coach, a TEDx speaker, and entrepreneur. Her passion and area of expertise is helping individuals and organizations drive culturally intelligent innovation. So, of course, that is why... I invited her and other secret reasons that will be revealed (laughs) why I invited her to be a guest on the Create Magic at Work podcast, because we talk about multiple intelligences throughout the show. Following her passion, Kristen founded Exponential Inclusion, LLC, where innovation and design, you'll have to explain this to me, Kristen, where innovation and design 10 times the power of inclusion? Mm, They 10x it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I met Kristen this year. This is uh, April 2023 when we're talking. And I, Kristen and I were, would we, would we call ourselves students? Yeah, students yeah. in um, the Edgewalker Facilitator Program with Dr. Judy Neal. And I discovered the Edgewalker's work because I work in the spiritual intelligence space and Edgewalker's falls under the domain of being a wise and effective change agent, change management, and and spiritual development. So it was really, gosh, I not to just not to be cliche, but it was really magical going through the Edgewalker program with you and with our other fellow people that were in our cohort and Dr. Judy leading the way. So Kristen and I thought it would be great if we got together and talked a little bit about cultural intelligence with everyone for the workplace, and also gave you a little bit of a taste of what an edgewalker is, because we are both edgewalker facilitators now. So Kristen, welcome to Create Magic at Work. Ooh, thank you, Amy. It's my pleasure <laughs> to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited to expose the Create Magic at Work listeners to edgewalkers, because we really haven't done that yet. And... I have talked a lot about what a wise and effective change agent is uh, from the SQ21, from a spiritual intelligence lens. And I've also mentioned quite a bit about how a lot of people identify on LinkedIn as change agents. Yeah. And that always makes me very curious as far as what they believe behind that, let's just Mm. say. So anyways... Do you want to start off sharing a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Absolutely. What you do? Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, I'll, I'll start with how I, why I created Exponential Inclusion, uh, and that will get to about myself. <laughs> okay. So I, I am a purpose-driven leader, and for me, uh, I haven't always been. I've always known I wanted to be, if that makes sense, but at the same time, I was suffering from burnout about five years ago, and I was in corporate space. I was burning the candle at both ends, as people would say, because Mm -hmm. I thought that I was being a high performer. And what I ended up finding out about myself was that, no, I was peak performing, and that was making me suffer. And Mm -hmm. I also thought, you know, how do I be an incredible mom? So I have two boys right now. They're both teenagers. And it's figuring out, okay, how do I be a great mom, a great wife, a businesswoman, someone who excels at what she does because I'm a high achiever. So according to Gallup Strength Finder, right, an activator and achiever are my top two, which can be amazing and also very dangerous if you don't know how to manage that. So I learned about myself that I am an entrepreneur and I do much better as an entrepreneur rather than an intrapreneur. 
I mm -hmm. love partnering and collaborating with companies around the world. And so what I realized was I needed to be doing the work that I love to be doing and doing it in a way that my entrepreneurial self can shine. And so what I realized through my own getting a coach for myself, going through high performance coaching myself, becoming a certified high performance coach alongside of being an expert in cultural intelligence and doing inclusion and belonging work with companies around the world, I finally realized, you know what, there is magic, truly, to saying, where can we find sparks, super nodes? So these sparks can be people, they can be processes, they can be things, but where can we find these sparks within our organizations that will create exponential inclusion? And this pathway to figure this out and actually going to Stanford into their graduate business school, doing a lead, a leadership program for executives helped me find that pathway to say, this is truly how I can be that purpose-driven leader that I want to be and design the life that I want to live. And that may sound Pollyannish, you know, like this is not, maybe it sounds too good to be true. And it's not that there aren't difficult times while doing this. But I do feel like I finally can live my mission of being a positive light in the world and helping to spread human kindness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. Really good. So the super nodes, how, can you elaborate on that a little bit and what that looks like? Yes. How do I know if I'm, if I'm a corporate executive, yeah. where's my super node in my organization? <laughs> yes, I love that. So finding super nodes, there's actually a process to it. <laughs> it's okay. like you're finding your influencers. You're finding the people who are high connectors, who, and they're not just influencing for power, which that is one way to influence, but they are influencing to do good in the world. They're influencing and finding other people within the organization because they want to help make them better. So they both are aware, self aware, and they mm -hmm. understand that. We need to continually learn about ourselves. There's not an end to our self-awareness and to the journey of learning about ourselves. And they want to share what they've been learning with others in a way that's impactful. So you'll see that these super nodes have a very high level of empathy. They have a very mm -hmm. high level of connectedness, a positivity, an outlook that is, how can we make this world better and be here to do better? Mm -hmm. But a key thing about super nodes and when I find them around the world, it's, it's pretty amazing when you find their nodes and their super nodes. These nodes are also have a brand of what I just described. The super nodes, though, their connection level, they are making these connections of ideas and people and then actually making the connection. So it's not just they're great people, but they do what they're going to say. Their integrity level is very high. And they say, you know what, I want to find this person and I know of this person because you have this need. Let me connect you. And this web starts forming. But then they can also influence. So when it comes to inclusion and belonging, they can influence their web of networks in a very positive way that creates the spread of exponential inclusion. Yeah. It sounds like you're talking about the qualities and skills of an edge walker. Ooh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly it. So it's you're finding these people who lead on the edge. And that's really what I've come to realize over the last year or so, specifically the last half year, is that the people that I work with the most and am drawn to are the people who are on the leading edge. And they they might be, and these are the edge walkers. And I call mm -hmm. them cultural edge walkers because often they're walking between these worlds, often these cultural worlds. And so the culture part is that they're trying to bridge these worlds that come along with, they could be ethnic worlds, they could be nationalities and the differences with working on a global scale, but it's much more than that. It could be focused on socioeconomics. It could be spirituality. It could be that they are trying to figure out with abilities and how do we work most effectively across our various abilities that we have. It's all the ways we see ourselves. So the diversity that we have in our organizations, but these super nodes and these cultural edge walkers actually are continually working on the skills for bridging these cultures that they walk between. Yeah. Um, so for everyone listening, 
Edgewalker is, and you can share your definition also, Kristen, but for the most part, it's someone that can walk between different worlds or between two different worlds, whether it's different cultures. For me, I think some may describe me as an edge walker because I'm bringing spirituality to the corporate space. So that's very edge walkery, yes. uh, some might say. And so that get, kind of gives you a, a picture of what an edge walker is. They also have a really great sense of what the future can hold. And you, you mentioned connecting. So just for everyone listening, you know, they, they are high connectors throughout throughout the workplace, high passion, high amount of focus. They can be laser focused on a project if need be. Yeah. You want to add any more to yeah. this? Cause I, I mean, don't think a lot of people listening might may have heard of like, what is an edge walker? What are they talking right. about? You know, that's yeah. right. No, no, I love it. I'll just add to what you said. Cause that's right on point with how, how I see it as well. It's also usually edge walkers have a very strong sense of value and values. So they have these core values that often if they are pushed to decide between their values and something in the organization culturally, so it can even the culture is within our teams and organizations. And if an edge walker feels like that's completely against their values, they will choose their values over what the team is doing or the organization. And so what often happens is there can be some rub if an organization or a team or a leader is not prepared to have an edge walker on their team, <laughs> there can be some <laughs> rub. And we, we edge walkers have all experienced it in different shapes and forms. But the positive side, and, and really we all need edge walkers on our teams to help us think differently and disrupt mm -hmm. the status quo. The positive side too, though, is as you mentioned, edge walkers can see into the future and sense into the future, typically their intuition is really high and they, they look and see, but then they also can manifest that. So when they see something and have a vision, they're visionaries. And when they see, oh, look at, and from my world and what I'm working in, look at how this world could be so much more inclusive and look how we can actually create a collaborative space that we come together to help others belong. And look at how we could try to do that and experiment and try to see how can we make this even better to make the world a better place. So that's, that's what an edge walker is. I mean, yeah. Whew. Yeah. And because, Power. because edge walkers have a strong sense of knowing what the future might be and, and manifesting that they, they take risks a little bit more than yeah. others might. Their risk taking level is a bit higher. And so that's really interesting also for a leader that is an edge walker. So that's change management to me, right? You're, you're getting yeah. this sense that that's being a wise and effective change agent. You have this sense of like what you just said, I have this sense that we can have community in the workplace. We can have collaboration. We don't have to have this unhealthy competition. We can make decisions that are for the greater good and I can sense that. I can feel that. I know that can be our future. And so now I'm going to take a risk and start my company, Exponential yeah. Inclusion. And I'm going to talk about this. And I'm going to talk about cultural intelligence just to paint a picture of what you're doing. Um, yeah. It's definitely edge walker. So I just, yeah. no, we've never talked about it on the show. And I think everyone's going to vibe with it because obviously everyone listening to Create Magic at Work is into spiritual intelligence and everything. So this is definitely like a deep dive, yeah. I would say, arguably, into the skill in quad four. I think it's um, it's skill 18, which is being a wise and effective yeah. change agent and just like deeply going into it as an edge walker. And also just one other thing that came up for me, a lot of edge walkers because of the values violation that might happen in the in the workplace where they're, they, they know their core values and they, they stay aligned with them, often end up being entrepreneurs, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So we yeah. might be in-house at times. I mean, I, I actually started, my career started off with AmeriCorps Vista Volunteer to, to start off, actually. And then it moved into the nonprofit world for about nine years and a leader in the nonprofit world doing workplace English. So teaching English to speakers of other languages who are in companies. 
And that merged then into starting my first business. And I did consulting then that first business. Then I decided to go try corporate for a little while and was in corporate for three years and then moved into another consulting firm. So this is kind of a, a career, I call it pathway, you know, portfolio. It's not a clear pathway. And that's often what edge walkers will find is that they, they create these portfolios, but these portfolios are critically important because the experience that many edge walkers have is varied. And, you know, we were able to see and try things and see things differently from the different perspectives that we've lived in and worked in. I also lived in Spain and Mexico and Costa Rica. I speak Spanish. So that's all part of who I am as an edgewalker and why for me, the cultural edgewalker side, I've talked to a lot of edgewalkers in the last probably three months, let's say. So mm-hmm. I talk to people who, who have been living between true national ethnic worlds. They may be, you know, 1.5 generation or, you know, a parent is still living in another country while they are in the United States or in another country. So they're separated from their family. And at the same time, they're operating in two languages or more. They're operating business Mm -hmm. even across Mm -hmm. cultures. It's just fascinating to see how even spiritually, how they're trying to operate when they may have grown up with one religion and they're operating in a space and in the workplace that is very different from the religion or spiritualities that they've grown up in. Yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. So, so tell us what cultural intelligence is. Yes. You talk about, Thank you. There's so many. Absolutely. Yes. Tell us what cultural intelligence is and then tell us how well, okay, let's leave it at that. I don't want to confuse you. Sure. <laughs> I'm like, I have so many questions. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so simply put, cultural intelligence is our capability to work and relate effectively across various cultural contexts. So it's these cultural contexts that's, that we've already mentioned, you know, all the different ways of what makes us who we are. Generations, I didn't mention, gender, all the differences that make us who we are. This is cultural intelligence helps us operate between those different worlds. And so we're adapting between these cultures or learning when do I adapt? So it's really a learned skill. And there's actually four skills that you need to be a culturally intelligent leader. You have to, and I'll just briefly talk about them, but feel free to ask more. The first one is your drive. It's really about your motivation. Are you motivated when stress hits? That's a key piece because you can be motivated just in general. Oh, yeah, I want to work with someone who's different from me. Of course. Yes. I think, you know, the the way of saying, oh, diversity will create innovation. So, of course, I want to have different perspectives. But that's actually not true because when you get to the heart of it and if you're working with someone who works very differently from you, that doesn't mean there will be innovation. You have to understand how do we bridge the gap between us in order to work effectively across. So when stress hits or when things get tight or when, you know, timelines are tight, any of these things, drive is all about your motivation to actually work with someone across that culture. And then the second skill is knowledge. And this is often where people stop. This is where we see inclusion and diversity efforts being ineffective because knowledge is about understanding people's cultural differences and similarities. It's understanding their backgrounds, what the business systems look like, the religious systems look like in different cultures, all the different ways, even linguistics and language and how that helps us see the world in a different way from our different language point of view. These are different things that we look at our own cultural values, and that's knowledge. But usually, if we stop at knowledge, that means we only have enough to be dangerous. (laughs) Because we've only learned, it's all in our head, our own heart, our motivation, our head, our knowledge. And if we don't pivot and do the third skill of strategy, and actually understand how do I be more strategic and actually plan my interaction, knowing that this person operates differently than I do, and their culture is different from mine, I have to plan my interaction differently than if it's someone from my own. So this is where cultural intelligence Mm -hmm. picks up from where emotional intelligence leaves off. It's all part of the same Mm -hmm. body of research. Um, And so this is where it's really interesting, because if we can plan, 
and then actually in the moment adapt and figure out, okay, what do I need to do differently and reflect on how someone is interacting with me? Maybe they're looking at me differently and I'm reading the signs and thinking, "Uh uh-oh, they're not understanding what I'm saying. But really, maybe they're just, if you can see me, if you're not just listening to this, they're nodding their head and they're from India and they're saying, I understand, I understand. You know, and I'm with you, I'm with you. Where someone might be saying like, what, do they mean no? If they don't understand that cultural nuance. And then the fourth Mm -hmm. skill very quickly is CQ action is all about adapting our behaviors. When do we adapt? When do we not? So that we don't look like a chameleon and just do everything that everyone else is doing. But at the same time, we figure out when is the right time to adapt so that we can help others understand the message better or communicate better with us and us with them. Okay. So recap the four names again. It was drive. Drive, knowledge, knowledge, and strategy. So when you started talking about strategy, it hit me that this, because there's so much buzz about how you can be your authentic self at work. And when you were talking about how do I approach this person with the wisdom that they come from a different worldview than mine. Hmm. Hmm. I felt that was a very good touch point or aha moment that to think about, because at that moment, if you're thinking of how do I approach this person with wisdom and understanding that they have a different worldview than mine, and also seek to understand what their worldview might be, Mm. that is is a key that may unlock people feeling like they can be their authentic selves in the workplace in a higher percentage of time was Ooh, just kind of yes. what what hit me with that and that is you know throw all the words out the window diversity inclusion whatever that's where people feel like they can be whole to add to what you're saying is the authenticity how i see it as authenticity takes me knowing myself and me knowing you. And it comes down to a term that, that I typically use. If, if someone needs to belong, then Ubuntu, that it's mm-hmm. about human connection, human kindness. We are all connected. And actually from our DNA, our DNA proves that we're all connected. I actually did a DNA swab and it traced my ancestors back to East Africa, where every single person started so it was the root of the human family tree and from there our ancestors moved so we are all connected through our dna but at the same time we are connected on a, a much larger consciousness level and you know when we think about and talk about spirituality we are all connected in a way and this is where you and i finding each other through this process of getting certified you know mm-hmm. these connection points to understand who i am I need to better know you. And every conversation I have allows me to see myself, you, and the world in a different way. So this is where CQ strategy is so important. If we want to live as our authentic self, some people will say, yes, I want to bring my whole self to the workplace and be authentic. Well, there's another edge to that, and this actually comes from one of my professors at Stanford. I finished a course just a, a few weeks ago on um, the power to lead, and he talked about authenticity, saying, you know, you don't always want to be authentic. And at first when he said it, I was like, what? What mm-hmm. is he saying? As we dug into that, I completely agree with him. And what I mean by that is if I show up one day, and my authentic self is upset because my kid's trying to get them out the door, for example, and they've raised my cortisol levels to all (laughs) highs. And I'm feeling like, oh my goodness, I don't have time for this next meeting or I'm getting frustrated. I don't want to bring that emotion, that attitude into the workplace, even though that's my authentic self in that moment. Mm -hmm. So it's actually reframing how I want to be in that moment to my colleagues, to my teammates, uh, to my clients, to those who I'm serving. And so I may adapt, and this is where CQ action comes in, I may adapt my behaviors 
which may not feel authentic in the moment, but ultimately is me authentically mm-hmm. and who I am and how I want to be in the world. Yeah. Does that make I sense? Think, I think for, yeah, yes, I think from when we're talking about being your, feeling like you can be who you are in the workplace, your sexual orientation or your color of your yeah. skin, all of those things comes, comes into play, right? Yes. What I feel like you're talking about with this adapting is, is the language you use from a spiritual intelligence lens. It would be, how can I operate from my higher self in this moment? How can I tap yes. in to, you know, I have a choice. I have a karmic choice to who, who do I want to be in this movie? And do I want to mm. show up to this meeting with, spreading this energy of anger and upset or do I want to take some breaths tap into my inner wisdom seek guidance from my higher self and get back to operating from my higher self so that energy yes. can flow out so yes i i think that adapting in that way is is critical especially for leaders in positions of power and that doesn't mean yes. that you shove your emotions down and not experience them But it also could be that you're leading by example and how to metabolize these emotions, how to get back to operating from your inner wisdom and compassion, understanding this is a lesson that you're working through. Thank you for the lesson. Thank you for the practice, those types of things. So I I like the way that you brought that up and how it ties to SQ quite a bit. I love that. Yeah, I want to ask you, I know we're getting a little bit on time, but I don't care. I want to go over a little bit if you're okay with that, because I want to ask you about your work in the Middle East. I'm really curious about it. So can you just share a little bit with us what you do, what your work is like in the Middle East? I I try to find um, projects. I guess this is me being an edge walker. I find projects that are what I find fun. You know, like there's a playful side of me that I I want to have fun while doing it, collaborate with those who are willing to experiment, uh, try out new things, see things from different perspectives. And I usually go to extremes with those, like seeing from a different perspective. So the opportunity came for me to partner with an organization in Saudi Arabia. And I first came in helping them design their executive um, education for their leaders and saying, how do we, as a talent management consultant and advisor to the CHRO? And the goal was to see how do, how do we see this very international group of executives and how do we help them work more effectively together as well as you know, bridging the gaps within their, their customer and constituent base. The interesting thing, what it's led to, some of the projects I work on, and I go to Saudi Arabia two to three times a year typically, Mm -hmm. Things like uh, future ready leaders. It is also creating empowering women, you know, conferences or programs related to that. So this is where there's a level of its leadership development, but figuring out how do we lead in this world effectively and their focus in this organization, they're actually a university and they are an innovation university. And the work that they do is impacting the world on a global scale from Saudi Arabia. And so part of the the bridging is looking at how do we bridge perspectives? There's been a lot of bias around Saudi Arabia and what that is. People ask me, do you feel comfortable going there? And, you know, I do. I absolutely do. But the world is changing in Saudi Arabia. The kingdom is changing dramatically in the last three to five years. And so there's, there's a sense of, for me, wanting to learn from a completely different perspective, even from, you know, a lot of my colleagues are Muslim. I'm Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, we operate, I, I live in Michigan, which is very cold in the wintertime, lots of snow. They have desert. <laughs> you know, there's so many <laughs> things that are very different. <laughs> uh, the way we work is different. And at the same time, we're learning how to work and relate effectively across our cultural differences to make something that is more innovative in the end. And I'm having a ton of fun with it. That's amazing. Yeah, that was a clear picture of what an edge walker would do. <laughs> it is what you're doing in Saudi Arabia. Very clear story. Thank you for that. And 
yeah, just another, another, I guess, painting an, a picture of cultural intelligence, right? Like expanding others' yeah. worldviews in person. So, yeah. Kristen, and what... practicing it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Putting it into practice for sure. So, what does quantum leadership mean to you? Oh, yes. I love that question because when I think about quantum leaders, I think about how they think ahead. They may, you know, formulate scenarios. They think about what the future might hold. They're experimenters. They're asking questions. They thrive on uncertainty. There are a lot of things about quantum leaders that, for me, that embodies the work that I'm doing, that I'm finding these type of leaders that are willing to, to see, we don't know, we haven't been able to do this thing well yet. We haven't figured out how to create an inclusive world or to create a space where many people belong, especially those who are on the margins and feel like outsiders. So we need people who are quantum leaders then in order to shape and help us move into the future in a different way than we have been in the past. So that's how I how I envision it and how I see quantum leaders and, and they're necessary to help us do these quantum leaps <laughs> to truly yeah. move. Yeah. Really good for the greater good. Add that at for the, the greater end, right? good. Yeah. Cause That's you can right. use it for other That's things too. Huh? <laughs> okay. Exactly I'm going right. <laughs> to pull a card for you from my journal prompt card deck that everyone knows. Hopefully you can get on my website. It's a deck of 33 cards for your work or career. And we're going to get a message today for everyone listening and for you and a question you can answer for them on the fly. This one. Oh. I love this. So you got motivation. Woo! Yeah. So you're, uh, the affirmation for everyone is I stay mentally strong when faced with adversity, knowing that success is the only possible outcome. Kristen. I got goosebumps. <laughs> It always, we always get the card meant for everyone. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then the illustration, so is like the turtles going to the ocean, like the, they keep going, you know? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so for everyone listening, either for yourself or offering advice, what are three courageous things we can do for our work and our career? Mm. I would say the first thing is the first courageous thing is taking that risk, even and it's calculated risk in many ways. We're thinking about things, but we're saying if you have this feeling that something needs to change, something needs to be different uh, because maybe you're not doing enough good in the world and you feel like there's something more that you take that courageous next step and you say it feels risky, but I need to do it. Because on the other side, as you take that step, it may not be exactly what you expected. It usually isn't. It could be even better. And so taking that mindset, that may be the second thing, having a mindset then that things will happen as you put yourself into the world in a way that you say, I want to do better in the world. I want to be better in the world. I want to make this place better. I want to connect with others on a different scale. As you put that out there, it will come back to you. And so maybe the third thing is be ready for it. <laughs> there's, there's, you don't know what's on the other side if you don't take that risk. Right? You don't know what's on the other side. And so to, to really, truly live into a space and be courageous and back to the card, to be motivated to do that. For me personally, I had to say, I don't know what's there. And this is a big risk for my family. This is a big risk for me. But I know there is something better. And I know that I can be better. And so I took that courageous risk. I said, let me go in a path that I don't know always, but I feel like as I've been guided into a light, a path that's lit up rather than staying in darkness when I've had burnout and challenged by health because of that burnout. If I didn't step into this new space, I wouldn't meet people like yourself, Amy. I wouldn't be able to have these conversations that we can help change worldviews, mindsets, skill sets, help people come to the world in a much better way um, and live fully and thrive. I mean, this is what it's all about. So 
I would want to just inspire and motivate people to say, take that next step. Even if you feel like it's scary, try it and see, experiment. Yeah, I love that. That's so, since we introduced everyone to edge walkers today, that's so edge walker. That's so, I have this knowing that thing, that this is the path I'm supposed to take. I'm going to risk take and, and manifest what this might look like, but I'm also going to leave room for the unimaginable is kind of yes. like what I heard you saying with all of that. Yes. And I love how you said, Absolutely. be prepared for it to come. I think that's a really cool manifesting motto or way to it live helps. by. It's like, oh, I'm going to be prepared because I know this is coming. It's like yes. making it come it's into setting. existence even a little bit more. Yeah. Yes. It's setting and like, According to that card, you know, it's setting yourself up to say, like, I, I will be successful in this. And, and it's not to say I know exactly how it will be to get there to that success. But it is saying it's a mindset and saying, you know, so even for my business, I don't know how successful it will be. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what it will look like. But I believe wholeheartedly that this is something that need that the world needs. And so you know, for me saying this is important for me to bring out there and put my energy into it and um, and put positivity into it, then plan for success. That is, and, and sometimes we need help to plan for it. And if you are listening and you say, you know, I don't know if I'm an edge walker, we all have a part of edge walker in us, just some have more than others. <laughs> and so if you say, but risk is really hard for me and during change that I can't take these risks, what I would say is we all need coaches as well. We all need people to guide us and walk alongside um, every single one of us does. And so that person can help us see things that we can't. And to wrap it back to cultural intelligence, same thing. We call it a cultural broker or cultural coach who helps us see things about other cultures that we we can't see on our own because we've never imagined it. We've never mm. experienced it before. Amazing. So, so amazing. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so I much. I love Amy. that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so glad that we're connected and we were in the class together. It was just I miss it, yes. actually. I miss it. If people want to connect with you more and get to know your work and deep dive a little bit more into cultural intelligence, how can they connect with you? Absolutely. So the first thing I'll say is feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. You can find me under Kristen Joy Ekins. And then the other thing is that my website is www.exi.global. And it talks about the different solutions that we offer, gives little accelerators on cultural intelligence. So you can actually take an assessment and learn about yourself and you know, how, how, what that looks like. But then also, um, you know, take a look at some of the other things that we offer to help boost cultural edge walkers. Fun. So fun. That sounds, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, Kristen, yes. thank you so much for being a guest on Create Magic at Work. You fit perfectly into what the show is all about. And I think we definitely sent some magic to everyone today. Thank you for being here. I love it. Amy, thank you. I loved this interview as well. Such a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Kristen and I talked a lot today about what an edge walker is, someone that can walk between two different worlds, multiple worlds, manifest, have a sense of the future, take risks, have passion and vision and integrity. So if you feel like you might be an edge walker, reach out to me. You can email me, amy at createmagicatwork.net. You can obviously direct message me on any social media platform. And if you want to know if you're an edge walker, let me know because I can help you as an edge walker facilitator. Sending magic to you. Do you have this feeling that you were called to do something very special and important in the world? Do you consciously tune into something higher than yourself for guidance and inspiration? Have you had mystical or spiritual experiences that have provided guidance in your everyday life and work? If you answered yes to those three questions, then you are a fit for a Create Magic at Work coaching program. If you're looking to explore new frontiers in your personal and professional life, I invite you to consider stepping into one of my coaching programs. I specialize in helping people step outside of their comfort zone and embrace the unknown. Whether you're looking to launch a new business venture, navigate a major life transition, or simply push yourself to reach new heights, I can help you achieve your goals. 
please schedule a complimentary consultation with me at createmagicatwork.net. Click on work with Amy and I can't wait to see you. Sending magic to you. Hi everyone, Amy Lynn Durham here. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. All the show notes and links can be found at createmagicatwork.net or you can just look in the show notes in the episode and they're right there for you. Come back each week and make sure you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Keep joining us for more exciting episodes where we help you transform workplace culture to leaders that create less drama and stress and have high productivity and profitability. You have the power to create a burnout-free workplace right now. You can gain access to my new course, Create a Burnout-Free Team and Workplace, where you'll receive step-by-step tutorials in creating a team and organization that thrives. Click the link in the show notes to join us. I hope we brought a little magic to your day. Sending magic to everyone and see you next time.